camera and viewers, I'm sitting here today with Steve and Susan Lundy of uh, Lazarone, hall number 11 of the Lagoon 440. They uh, they bought the boat about a couple years ago. They sailed it up from Panama, and I'm just kind of kind of let them tell you of their adventures on the high seas and uh, uh, things that they've enjoyed about living aboard uh, Lagoon 440. Go ahead, guys. Well, I was hesitant to buy a sailboat in the first place because uh, I've been a power boater my whole entire life. And um, I did a lot of uh, investigating before I decided to buy a Lagoon 440. I went to all the boat shows. I walked aboard all the boats at all the boat shows. And I'm a tall guy, six foot two. And most importantly was the headroom yeah. and all the comforts of home. So um, I, uh, I made an Excel spreadsheet and did all the homework. And Susan and I sat down and decided exactly what we wanted in our new home because we were planning to live aboard. So um, out of the XL spreadsheet, we went to the boat shows, we looked at all the boats, and we decided on the Lagoon 440 was the boat for us because it's absolutely perfect. I've heard that several times before. <laughs> what attracted you to the Lagoon 440, Susan? Mm -hmm. um, There's a few things that I definitely was looking for. One was a separate shower, um, owner's Master version, shower, of yeah. course, Master separate shower, shower um, galley up is yeah. definitely one. So the front loading freezer, front loading and, freezer and, and refrigerator, and refrigerator. And is very important yeah, to her. That was well, I, I noticed this particular boat has a uh, freezer, refrigerator, an outside uh, refrigerator, Outfit and an ice maker as well. That's Correct. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's got all the comforts of home, which uh, we wanted because we're, we're we were going to be living aboard, you know. So we wanted to have the best of the best. One of the things that we, we talked about in the previous conversation, and I just asked Susan, was uh, as far as having two people living aboard in the flybridge situation. A lot of times at the boat shows, I get questioned quite often about how do you uh, how do you take shifts, how do you stay in touch with one another because it's kind of a separation just with two people and or guests. Go ahead. And that's a good question because we actually went back and forth on the flybridge. We're like, do we want a flybridge? Do we not want a flybridge? Do we want a flybridge? Do we not want a flybridge? So we weren't really sure, and we decided we would get one. Absolutely love it. That's interesting. Just happy, happy to death with it. Would be would be disappointed if we didn't get it after we knew that we had it. And I mean, you get the view up there is absolutely unbelievable. Right. Just right. the view up there and to to um, sail. I mean, we'll sail all night. We take four hour shifts each. He'll go down the bed or I'll go down the bed. We have a um, handheld radios if we need each other. That sounds like it works perfect. As far as the uh, single handing characteristics of the boat, and again, we talked about that before I uh, turned the video on, was uh, the boat basically sails itself. Can you it, share that with us? It sails itself. It has uh, power winches in the right places, so the sails just go up automatically. You just have to turn into the wind and and make sure that they go up properly. But uh, as far as cranking on the winches and that type of thing, is non-existent. You can you can run the boat with all power winches. Very easy to sail. Um, as far as uh, the watches that you were talking about, whenever you have your four-hour watch on, we do have the electronics available. We can uh, track any ships. We have a zone radar that we can put out. So it'll My alarm airplane doesn't you. even have that. <laughs> it, it will alarm you well before there's any danger. And uh, you can scan the horizon from the flybridge, you know, and then come down and, and do your watch from inside the, the uh, at the nav station if the weather turns inclement, then uh, you can do it from inside and just trust your radar, trust your instrumentation. You still have plenty of view, more view than most boats have mm -hmm. from inside the nav mm -hmm. station. Speaking of that, when you're single handing, even, even at night, uh, can you share with us as far as what, did you tweak the boat quite often or what was your max speed? How big of the seas were you in? Tell us about, because that's what the viewers want to see, uh, hear about, is I, what, what are the actual experiences on the boat? I want to tell you about the spinnaker, sailing at night with the spinnaker. We sail the spinnaker from Marsh Harbor back to here, 36 hour sail. Of course, we did all night. And you can tack the spinnaker by yourself. When we, he was sleeping, Shade I tacked the spinnaker by myself during the night coming across the Bahama Bay. That's amazing. I didn't need to wake him up, no problem. That's amazing. You can do it all by yourself. And as far as sailing at night, that type of thing, with the uh, electronics we have on board, with the zone alarms on, I mean, there's there's two different zone alarms you can set for your radar. It'll, uh, it's got 48 mile radar, so you can set them as far out as you want, but we usually run them about uh, six miles out to three miles in, and then a three mile to a one mile. And you can, con you can shape them like a cone, you can shape them in a circle, you can do all these different configurations with your electronic or with your radar to warn you in advance. 
And um, as far as seas go, we've had this boat in uh, 16 and 18 foot oh seas. My, yes. <laughs> and uh, it, it, uh, it's an uncomfortable ride, but it, you don't feel scared. It's not... You don't feel unsafe. You don't feel like you're on a small no. boat, even in 16 and 18 foot seas. We have been caught a couple of times out when you you don't want to be there, but you know, this is a world cruising yacht. Look, that's and that that's exactly happen. right. And, and the, it's this made needs, for that. This story needs to be told because there's a lot of myth out there surrounding, you know, most people think it's flat, calm, or two to three foot seas, and that's not the case. But this boat is a stable platform that you can utilize worldwide. Mm -hmm. This boat surprised me in 16 and 18 foot right. seas. I felt totally safe and comfortable. I was uh, on the flybridge driving the boat into these seas, and it, you know, you'd get a little bit of spray up on the coach roof. That was it. It wasn't coming over or anything else. And I'm talking about breaking seats. Can you give us an idea of performance with the spinnaker and or without about performance, speed, uh, when you are when you were coming back those six weeks? That gives you a good indication of what the boat will do. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. The, um, the boat points very nicely into the wind. It'll point uh, between I'd say the tightest you'd want to sail into the wind is going to be about 40 degrees. Uh, after that, you can start one motor and just chug along at 12 to 1500 RPMs, barely using any fuel whatsoever, just to keep the boat pointed in the right direction. And you can sail our 30, 35 degrees into the wind with your. That's pretty good. That's yeah, very with good. One and on. with one mm -hmm. motor, just chugging, and which will. At, it's actually pointing the boat to where. It'll catch the wind and propel you through the water, but you don't fall off into the uh, into the oncoming wind. And without the motor, of course, it'll fall off. But with that motor just barely turning, it keeps you pointing in the right direction, and you can sail her into the wind. And I think as far as speed, probably half wind. That's good because that's, yeah. that's what it normally should be. Get about half wind. Normally mm -hmm. should be. Again, I'm with Steve and Susan London, Lundy rather, and uh, Peanut Islands behind us here at Riviera Beach near West Palm Beach, Florida, and I wanted to sit down with them and share with you some different ideas about a Lagoon 440 characteristics on how they utilize the boat in the liveaboard situation. Thanks for watching.